Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the effects of institutionalization, with a specific focus on Romanian orphan studies. Throughout this video we're going to have a quick look at the history of Romanian orphanages, just to set the scene a bit, and then we're going to look at two pieces of research investigating the effects of institutionalization. We'll then finish off with four evaluation points. For anyone who is looking for exam questions or an example essay, you can click the link at the top of the screen now and it will take you to a video that has both of those things in it. Now I appreciate that this isn't a history lesson, but understanding why it was possible to conduct Romanian orphan studies in the first place is quite important. So, from 1965 until 1989, Romania was being ruled by a communist dictator called Nicolae Ceausescu, on the screen now. In an attempt to boost the Romanian population, one of the things that he did was to implement restrictions on abortion and contraception, and he introduced a lot of benefits for families having children. The problem that came with that, however, was that people couldn't really afford to have a lot of kids, which meant that many families were producing babies as often as was possible without actually having the means to care for and support them, which ultimately resulted in high levels of child abandonment throughout the whole country. Over the 20 odd years or so that Ceausescu was in power, it's estimated that around half a million children were raised in orphanages. Now, after Ceausescu was overthrown, many of the orphans were adopted by British families, which gave psychologists the opportunity to study the impact of early maternal deprivation on things like emotional and intellectual and cognitive and physical development. One of the big studies that looked at this is called the English-Romanian Adoptee Study, which was conducted by Michael Rutter over the course of many, many years. This is one of two studies that I'm going to go through in this video, but this is the important study, and this is the one that I would recommend that you remember in the most detail. So, Rutter followed 165 orphans adopted by British families, and he was asking the question as to whether or not good quality aftercare could make up for negative early attachment experiences. As a part of the study, the adoptees were assessed at various ages in terms of their physical, cognitive and emotional development, and they were compared to a control group of British adoptees. Rutter found that upon arrival in Britain, the adoptees showed signs of malnourishment and delayed intellectual development. But when they were then retested at the age of 11, their rates of recovery in terms of the intellectual delay were dependent on their age at adoption. So effectively, the older they were adopted, the worse the delay was in terms of the intellectual development. As you can see on the screen now, children adopted before the age of six months had a mean IQ of 102, which was kind of on par with the control group, but then after that, the mean IQ dropped down to 86 and then 77 if the children were adopted after two years. Rutter also found clear attachment issues, specifically in children adopted after the age of six months. These children showed signs of a disinhibited attachment style, and behaviours associated with this type of attachment style include clinginess, attention-seeking behaviour, and social behaviour directed indiscriminately towards both familiar and unfamiliar adults. Okay, so they would show affectionate behaviour effectively to strangers and also people that they know. And that could potentially be a result of living with multiple carers over a long period of time and needing to try and build a bond with each of them. So that was the English-Romanian adoptee study. There is also a second study that I want to show you, which is called the Bucharest Early Intervention Project, but I've condensed it all onto one page because it's not as important as Rutter's research, but it is quite nice just to have a second study, just in case you need it. This study was conducted by Zina et al. in 2005, and it looked specifically at attachment. As part of the research, they assessed attachment in 95 Romanian infants who had spent the majority of their lives in institutional care, and they compared them to a control group of 50 children who had never lived in care. They used a variety of measures, including the strange situation, and they also conducted interviews with the families to gain an idea of the behaviour that the infants were showing. 
they found that there was a much lower percentage of securely attached children and a much higher percentage of disinhibited children amongst the Romanian orphans. So the findings you can see in percentages on the screen now, you had 19% secure in the Romanian orphans group and you had 44% disinhibited in the Romanian orphans group, um, which is a big difference to the control group of the 50 children who had never lived in care. Okay, so this is just further support for the idea that institutional care can impact attachment behavior. Okay, so the bottom line in terms of the effects of institutionalization. Research has shown that there appear to be two major effects. You've got delayed intellectual development, which was displayed by Rutter. IQ drops the later that people were adopted. However, the delay appears to be able to be made up if people were adopted before the age of six months. You also have problems in attachment, as displayed by both Rutter and Zena, where you had a higher proportion of disinhibited attachments compared to a control group, particularly if the children were adopted after the age of six months. Rutter explained this high proportion of disinhibited attachment as being a product of living with multiple carers during the sensitive period of attachment and needing to potentially form a bond with each of them for survival purposes. Okay. So that was the outline. Let's move on to the evaluation points and go through a couple of strengths and a couple of limitations. So one huge benefit of this research is how it's improved psychologists' understanding of the negative impact of early institutional care, and it's educated them on how to prevent the worst of these effects. This has led to major improvements in the conditions experienced by children growing up in the care system. So, for example, children's homes now avoid having large numbers of caregivers for children, who instead now tend to have one or two key caregivers who provide emotional care. It's also led to foster care and adoption being encouraged where possible rather than institutional care. And that gives children in these situations a greater chance at developing at a rate considered normal for their age, both in terms of intellectual development, but also in terms of physical, cognitive, and of course, attachment as well. Another strength is that Romanian orphan studies have a clear advantage over previously conducted orphan studies, which is the lack of confounding variables. Now, many of the children studied in orphanages before this point had experienced varying degrees of trauma, such as neglect, physical abuse, and bereavement due to wars, for example. And it's quite problematic disentangling the effects of those experiences from those living in institutional care. However, children in Romanian orphanages, for the most part, were given up by loving parents who simply couldn't afford to keep them. And that means that the results of Romanian orphan studies are less likely to be confounded by other negative experiences and are therefore more likely to have high internal validity. Okay, because they're more likely to be measuring what they actually say that they're measuring. However, that being said, it is also important to consider that the quality of care in Romanian orphanages was so poor with children receiving very little emotional care or intellectual stimulation, that that in itself could have introduced different confounding variables that people weren't expecting. So that means that the harmful effects seen in Romanian orphan studies could represent the effects of poor institutional care rather than institutional care in general. Okay, so you've got a little bit of a counterpoint there, which is quite nice for discuss questions. And then one final point, another nice one for discuss questions, if you ever need to discuss this in an essay, and that is the potential knock-on effects of the research. So, the results show that late adopted children typically experience poor developmental outcomes. And those results were published whilst the children were growing up. This could have resulted in parents and teachers, and even the children themselves, 
having reduced expectations of their capabilities. That could then lead to things like low self-esteem, lack of belief in themselves, being treated differently by parents or teachers, or it could even create a self-fulfilling prophecy for the children. So, despite a lot of good coming from this research, the potential damage that it could cause to the children involved calls into question whether the costs of the research outweigh the benefits, and ultimately, whether this research should ever have been conducted in the first place. What you've also got to remember is that the study is still ongoing, and we still don't have answers to the majority of the questions. Yes, the Romanian orphans are now for the most part in their 20s, however, they've still got the majority of their lives ahead of them. And even if they weren't fully caught up the last time Rutter did an assessment, it doesn't mean that they're never going to catch up. Okay, so these are things to consider, and these are things that make this type of research socially sensitive. Okay, so it's a really nice discussion point here that you can chuck into an essay, and examiner will absolutely love it. All right? Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video. Remember, like I said before, there is a completely different video that has exam questions with suggested content and an example essay as well, one outline and four evaluation points all together so you can see what that would look like. The link to that video was at the beginning, but it's also now on your screen, so you should be able to just click on that and check it out if you want to. I hope it's been useful. If you have any questions or queries, please pop them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next one.